In this video, we'll finish our tour of the new Mix Console by exploring the rest of the new features, including the new Rack section. Before we get into the Rack, let's take a quick look at two other panes, the Meter Bridge and EQ Curve. The Meter Bridge is pretty self-explanatory. It gives you a better view of each channel's volume behavior. You can resize it by dragging the edges, and you can set up its behavior using the Functions dropdown. The next pane is the Equalizer Curve Area. This is a surprisingly powerful tool because it's interactive. It gives you direct access to the EQ settings in addition to the visual feedback. Let's start with a channel that has no EQ settings defined. Single click to open the graphic editor, which will remain open until you move your mouse off of it. And just click again to reopen. Now, single click to enable up to four EQ nodes. Hovering over a node reveals the frequency and gain values, which you can alter by clicking and dragging. To adjust the Q value, hold down the Shift key and then click and drag. If you right-click on an EQ curve, you can call up options like Deactivate, Invert, you can copy it, and you can even change the type of equalizer. To remove a node, double-click it. And keep in mind, we're not even down to the main EQ area yet. All of this functionality is available just within the EQ curve display. Next, let's look at the Pictures pane. Double-click in the box to open up the Picture menu. Use the buttons on the left to navigate through the factory pictures or your own pictures. Then double-click an image to assign it to the track. If you select an image and then click Preview, you can see how the icon will look with various color, size, and rotation options. You can even click and drag to reposition the image. Click the User button to access your own image library. And use the Import button to add images from your hard drive. If you want to get rid of an existing picture, click Reset. Just above the faders is the Notepad pane which is also pretty self-explanatory. But it is worth pointing out that you can right-click and share the channel notes in real time through a variety of social media. At the bottom are the faders and panner with controls for mute, solo, and the channel editor. Now the new channel settings editor has so many great features that it gets its own video, which is coming up later. Okay, now it's time to get back into the channel rack. To make this easier to see, I'll disable pretty much everything else for the moment. Click on the Racks icon to see everything that's available in your channel rack. Click All Racks to enable the entire suite. And you can use this button with the asterisk to determine if you want to see one rack area at a time, or if you want them all open, in which case you navigate through them by scrolling. In Exclusive Mode, opening one rack, closes the others. The routing rack contains drop-down menus for input and output connection options. The pre-rack allows you to make adjustments to the signal on its way into the mix console. For example, if you want to eliminate low-frequency rumble or noise from a vocal mic, turn on the low-cut filter, then click and drag the green bar until the unwanted noise is eliminated. Or, if you want to get rid of some hiss coming from a bass guitar amp, you can enable the high cut filter, then pull the green frequency selector across until the hiss is gone and only the bass guitar sound remains. The gain control adjusts the overall strength of the incoming signal. The phase button flips the incoming signal's phase 180 degrees. 
Inverting the phase of a signal can help prevent that washy or phasey sound that can occur when two microphones pick up the same sound at slightly different distances. This can happen with a drum kit, for example. So if you have multiple mics in the same room and the signal sounds washy or unfocused, you can try experimenting with phase. Invert the phase one mic at a time and see if that cleans things up. All of these adjustments are pre-fader. Now the next rack is for insert effects. The word insert means that the effect is inserted across the entire channel. So if you put a plug in here, 100% of the signal will go through that effect. And this is ideal for things like compressors or equalizers. Click on an empty slot to open the new quick access menu. Now pick out the plugin that you want to load. And you can see that the editor for the plugin opens as soon as you select it. Click in the next empty slot if you want to add more. And notice that you have a search box at the top of the menu. Once you have your inserts the way you want them, you can save them as a custom effects chain. Now, the next time that you need this same combination, you can simply reload your effects chain preset. You also have the option to load just the insert rack from one of the factory track presets. The track presets in Cubase Element 7 were created by some of the best engineers in the world, so they give you a great starting point for almost any type of signal that you need to record. The next row in the channel rack is the equalizer section. The EQ curve window here works just like the one we saw earlier. Below the EQ window, Cubase shows you all four bands in detail. Each band has a power switch, a type selector, and controls for gain, frequency, and Q. At the top left of the equalizer section is a bypass button. And at the top right is the icon to load and save presets. And here again, you have the option to load up a professional EQ section. So if you're recording a saxophone for the first time, and you aren't really sure how to set the EQ, try loading the preset for basic sax as a starting point. Another great feature found throughout Cubase Element 7 is the ability to right-click on a specific parameter and access its automation track. Okay, now it's time to get into the heart of the mix console, the new channel strip. The channel strip gives you all the functions of a traditional mixing board and more built into every channel. These include a noise gate, compressor, transient or envelope shaper, saturation options, and a limiter. You also have the ability to drag the equalizer to any position in the chain. To activate a device, click on its name, for example, the compressor. This triangle will reveal multiple options for some slots. In this case, the choice between a standard compressor and a tube compressor, the tube style adding a little more analog warmth. As you enable more and more slots, the number of knobs goes up quickly, but you can use the G and H keys on your computer, or the Shift G and Shift H, to adjust channel width and height. Here's what a channel strip looks like with everything enabled. For complete details about every parameter and option, go to the Help menu, Operation Manual, and open the section called The Mix Console. Then scroll to the section called Using Channel Strip Modules, which is around page 160. But in the meantime, here's a brief rundown of what the various sections do. Noise gates are used to turn off or gate a channel when the signal falls below a certain threshold. This can help clean up your overall mix by completely shutting down any channels where nothing's going on. For example, a drum kit has a lot of mics on it, but the mics for tom-toms and crash cymbal only get used occasionally, and the rest of the time they're picking up spill from the surrounding area. Careful use of noise gates on these input or playback channels can completely eliminate most of the unwanted spill. Compressors work like automatic volume controls. Any signal above the threshold value is reduced. Now, how dramatically it's reduced is determined by the ratio control. The attack and release controls determine how rapidly the compressor kicks in and how slowly it backs off. Now, if you haven't used compressors much, try this. Right-click on the compressor module and select Load Preset. 
Then, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll up and down through the factory presets and watch how the control settings change for the various types of material. The envelope shaper works like the amplifier envelope of an analog synth. This lets you sculpt the beginning of the sound to adjust qualities like punch. The next module is saturation, and here again you can choose from different types. Saturation needs to be used in moderation, but it can really help to warm up guitars and vocals. The last module is the limiter section, and it can be set to three different modes. The brick wall limiter is used to establish an absolute ceiling for your signal level using the threshold control. This ensures that no incoming signal overloads the system, causing clipping. The maximizer mode can be used to boost loudness, although again, less is more. Too much loudness can squeeze all the life out of your music in no time. Finally, you can click and drag the green EQ position bar to move the EQ within the channel strip. One of the coolest new features is the ability to click and drag settings between channels. You can also copy and paste items between channels. And once you have your channel configured perfectly, scroll to the top of the strip and save it as a strip preset. Remember that you can bypass a strip by clicking on the button at the top. And you can always use the global strip bypass button at the very top to bypass all of the channel strips project wide. The last rack section I want to look at is the sends rack. Adding a plugin as a send means that only a portion of the signal is routed to that effect. The send method is better for things like reverb or delay, where you want to add just a little effect to the original track. And new in Element 7 is the ability to create a new effect send from inside the mix console. Right click and select Add Effects Channel. When you click on the option to Add Effects Channel to Send 1, Cubase automatically creates all the busing and connections in the background. All you have to do is pick out which effect you want and click Add Track. The editor for your send effect opens automatically so you can configure the plugin. Then click and drag the blue bar in the send rack to increase the amount of signal going to the effect. 